the groove object is the most versatile object for playing sound from a buffer tilde. Like SF play tilde, you can specify which sound file to use, the starting point, the playback speed, and starting and ending points for a repeating loop within the sample. Unlike SF play tilde, though, you can also specify backward speeds to play a sound in reverse. As with other objects that read from a buffer tilde, Groove tilde accesses the buffer remotely without patch cords by sharing its name. In this example, the buffer tilde is named Hit Me, and this particular example has an optional argument of 2000. That 2000 specifies the length of the buffer. By default, buffer would expand itself to whatever the length of the sound file is. But by putting that argument in, I can restrict the size of the file. And one advantage of this is I know exactly how long it is. So I know that whatever I load into that hit me buffer is going to be always 2,000 milliseconds. In addition to a buffer to read from, Groove also needs to have a start time. Start time is counted in milliseconds from the beginning of the buffer file. And it also needs to have a playback speed so it knows what speed to play it back at. Note that both of these go into the left inlet of Groove. Groove tells them apart because the start time is going to be a float value while the speed is going to be a signal. When buffer receives a playback speed of 1, that's telling it to play back at normal speed. Speed values between 0 and 1 will give you a slower than normal playback. For example, 0.5 will give you a playback of half speed. 0.25 would give you one quarter speed. Similarly, if we go above one, we get faster speeds. A value of 2.0 would play back the file twice as fast. So in this example, with a buffer with, that has a length of 2,000 milliseconds, if we play it back at twice the speed, it's only going to last 1,000 milliseconds. Now, a cool thing about buffer, is, or correction, groove, is that it will accept negative values, so we can play a sound file backwards. Now, one thing to be cautious of when using backward speeds, when you specify the start time, because it's playing backwards, you have to give it the start time of the end of the file. For example, if I want to play the whole sound file backwards for start time, I would give it 2,000 and a playback speed of some negative number. For this example, I'm going to use the Cherokee sound file because it's really easy to tell with speech where we're at with the file. I'm going to give it a normal playback speed, 1.0, a start time of 0. That should give me 2,000 milliseconds of Cherokee speech. I'm going to do your now, if I change the playback speed to, say, 0.75, I should hear it play back at three-quarters of speed. I notice that it's also taking longer to play. If I play it back at 0.5, it's going to play back not at 2,000 milliseconds, but it's going to give me 4,000 milliseconds. Now, if I wanted to still have only 2,000 milliseconds, I would have to give this a start time of, say, 1,000. Now, one of the cool things about Groove is that we can play sounds backwards. For example, a speed of negative 1 would play the file at normal speed, but backwards. Now, when I from zero, I get nothing. Because it's backward speed, it's going to start at some point in the file and then read backwards towards zero. So I've got to have a some value greater than zero in there. So if I want to hear the whole file, I'll give it a value of 2,000. And then we hear the whole file backwards. 
One of the very useful messages that we can give Groove is loop. Loop tells Groove to play a portion of the sound file over and over again. When we give it a loop 1, that tells it to turn looping on. And if we tell it loop 0, we're going to do an example here using the Cherokee sound file. We'll go ahead and read that into the buffer. And we'll start with looping off, normal playback speed, starting at start time 0, and okay, with no loop point set. 1.0. And if we play the file, what we hear is two seconds of Cherokee speech. Now if I set loop points of, say, 1200 start time and 1800 end time, I want to turn looping on and press start. What we're going to hear is the sound file start from zero, play through 1200 milliseconds till it gets to 1800 milliseconds, and then skip back to the 1200 mark and keep repeating that loop right there. So what we're going to hear is 600 milliseconds repeated over and over again. And remember, we use this zero as a stop mechanism because a speed of zero, playback speed of zero, tells Groove to stop. To create smooth, undetectable loops with Groove, we use the loop interp message. If we don't put that in, Groove will go to the loop start time and play to the end time, and then go back to the beginning of the loop start. But that may not always be a smooth transition. You're likely to get clicks and unwanted bumps in the sound. Loop interp takes care of that by smoothing out the transitions. And we turn that on and off just like we did loop. A 1 turns it on and a 0 turns it off. Finally, using the speed value, we can use Groove to produce equally tempered pitches. This is the same method we used with SF Play. To scale the MIDI notes of the key slider, or any other MIDI input device, such as a sequencer or a keyboard controller, we use the expression object. And we use the value 1.059643 as a good approximation for the 12th root of 2. Here's an example of using the key slider with the expression to scale equally tempered pitches. And I'm going to use the show 0630 file as an example. Now for my example, I'm going to have a start time of 1200 milliseconds. And I'm going to set loop times to start with a 1500 milliseconds and 1582. Which means I'm going to have a loop of 82 milliseconds. I'll turn loop and turp on, turn looping on and start playing the keyboard. Now we can play around with these loop times and see what we can get. In summary, the groove object is the most versatile way to play sounds from the buffer tilde. You can specify which sound file to play. You can specify the starting point, the playback speed, which can be either forward or backwards, 
and the starting and ending points for loops within the sample. The speed of groove is determined by a signal coming into its left inlet, and it starts whenever it receives a new start time value.